Hello and welcome. Today we will be doing something that I haven't really done in a while. We are going to be doing some dev box stuff. More specifically, we will be setting up a dev box from start to finish. And this is not going to be a deep dive. This is going to be a quick video, just showing you the steps along the way. So uh, let's get cracking, shall we? So we'll start in the Azure portal, of course, and then we'll head on to the dev box service, then down to dev centers, because that is the first step in setting up dev box. You need a dev center. So we'll hit create, select the proper subscription and the proper resource group, and then we'll give it a proper name. So I'll just call it dev, dev center, I guess, and hit review and create, and then create. And while this is deploying, uh, I can tell you the things that I will be skipping because I assume at this part you do, that you have the prerequisites all in order you know you have your tenant you have your Azure subscription you have intune you have enter id and you have the proper licensing in place uh, meaning for example a microsoft 365 business premium which will cover all the licenses you need for dev box and uh, another thing to note is while i was deploying this last time i did it uh, then it had been a while and i actually got a error message here stating that I have not registered the resource provider, but I had. Um, that was solved by simply just unregistering the resource provider called Maxoft.devcenter and then re-registering it. So um, note that. All right, now that that is done, we'll go back to the homepage and to Microsoft Dev Box. And the next step is to create a project. So we'll head on down to projects, then hit create. Then, of course, select the subscription and resource group again. And we'll tie this to our dev center. Give it a name. And um, I guess I probably should have had the Azure naming tool set up for this. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want me to create a video on that, because that has actually been on my list. Uh, so let's just call it product for now. And hit next. And do you want dev box limits? Uh, yeah, that's reasonable to have i guess so this way you can limit the amount of dev boxes per developer or per user uh, which is you know handy so that people don't spam that create dev box and have your costs running wild so i'll set it at two and then hit review and create and create right now that the project is all set up we will head back to our main portal and then to the microsoft dev box service yet again then we will go to dev centers into the dev center that we created and now we need to create a dev box definition so we'll go down to dev box definitions hit create dev box definition we'll uh, give it a name uh, definition i guess and then we'll select the image um, this is generally a good thing to use, you know, marketplace uh, images because they are maintained by Microsoft, but you can also use your own custom images if you want. I have a video on that as well. Should be linked up in the corner or in the description as well. Uh, but for now, we'll stick with a simple image. So let's use uh, Windows 11 Enterprise plus the OS optimizations. And we will be using the latest one. And for compute, uh, let's select the lowest tier, 8 vCPUs and 32 gigs of RAM. And the same for storage, lowest one, 256 gigabytes of SSD. Then we'll hit create and uh, do some more waiting while the definition is being created. All right, now that that is done, we will go back up one level to the main dev box um, center, I guess. Uh, projects go into the product that we created. And now we need to create a dev box pool. So we'll go down to dev box pools, then create a dev box pool. Uh, give it a name. Uh, let's just call it pool because I have so much imagination when it comes to naming. Should have had that Azure naming tool. Um, select the definition, dev box definition that we created. And we will deploy this to a Microsoft hosted network. Um, we will be giving the uh, creator local admin. That's fine. Auto stop is a nice thing to have so that, you know, um, they don't run indefinitely. And I have to confirm that my organization has Azure hybrid benefit licenses, which will apply to the uh, dev boxes that are created. Then I'll hit create 
and do some more waiting. And now that we have our pool created, we can see that the status is no errors found. We can now provide access to this project so that, you know, people can start creating their dev boxes. So we'll head on to access control then we'll hit add role assignment. And then we will search for the role dev uh, box user. This is the one and hit next and select members. I'll select myself. Review and assign and then review and assign again. And now that I have the role, I can head on over to dev box. Uh, dot microsoft.com and hit new dev box so uh, i'll just call it dev box oh my god dev box 01 and hit uh, create now it is stated that this process on average takes about 25 minutes uh, but it can also take significantly longer uh, depending on the load in the azure region that you are creating the dev boxes in so uh yeah anywhere from 25 minutes to one and a half hours is is my experience at least all right and now my dev box is complete and i can use this as i will but there is one more thing that i want to show you because if we head on uh, back to our project and down to our DevBox pools. We should now see that I have one DevBox, but there's really no way of, you know, administering those DevBoxes, those one DevBoxes. Uh, to be able to do that, you need to assign yourself the project admin role. So head on back to access control, hit add role assignment, then we'll search for dev and then you have the dev box project admin and this is the one that you would you know typically uh, assign to the admin of the project or the team or whoever is overseeing the uh, users for your dev box pool so i'll select the project admin and hit next and select myself so i'll assign the role to myself and then review and assign review and assign yet again and then once that role is assigned, then head on back to DevBox pools. All right, so I actually had to sign out and then back in in order to have the newly assigned role actually working. But now you can see that pool is uh, now a hyperlink. So I can click on it and here I can see all of the dev boxes that is created within that pool. So if I wanted to do something to these dev boxes, I can scroll on over to the right and i have this uh, three ellipses and i can shut it down delete it or restart it if i want to so if you have some users that always leave their dev boxes running you can actually go in and shut them down for them so uh yeah that is how to set up dev box from start to finish and uh let me know what you think down in the comments like subscribe all that jazz and uh yeah cheers